Good morning, it's me. I'm back. I'm Stephanie Flath, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, and I'm coming to you live on Wednesday morning, November 15. So, are you a hunter's widow? Are you, um, I gotta check my, oh, there we go, that's better. Um, has your, has your person or you, if you're a hunter yourself, have you gotten anything yet today? Well, I don't know how it is in other states, but Michigan today was opening season for, oh, what's it called? I want to say rifle, but it's, there's a different name. Not gun season, not rifle season. I, I don't remember the name. Anyway, okay, so I'm going to refresh my screen a second so that I can see comments. Let me know when you get on. I don't see anybody coming on yet, so hopefully you can find me okay. Um, all right, I'm on Tales of Vice Stamping. Okay, so it seems like people are struggling to find me, baby. So today, I'm, I'm going to, oh, my glasses are bad. Okay, so I'm going to fix my glasses a minute while hopefully people are finding me. I don't know what the struggle is, so just a second. Um, so I'm stalling a little bit so that, I don't know why my screen keeps coming up green. Are you guys having a problem? Looks like I'm holding a piece of garden green cardstock in front of it. Do you guys keep seeing that? I see somebody's trying to come on. Let me know when you're here so that I know who I'm chatting with. That's so weird. Hmm. I wonder if it's just my reception. Okay, so as... Mm, that's really annoying. So is anybody on with me? Do I need to start again? Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you're not getting any green. How long have you been on? I've had to do it like five times since I've been sitting here. Like just now. I wonder why that is. So update me. If you get any green, let me know. Okay, so <clears throat> I didn't grab post-it notes for my randomizer, so I need to grab that a second. And, um, and a pen. Oh, there's my pen. Okay. It took a while to connect. Yeah, I could tell, like, nobody was coming on yet. That's so weird. I don't know what's going on. Um, uh, you'd think on a gorgeous day like today that there'd be no problems whatsoever. Hi, Angela. Thank you for joining me today. Um, do you have the day off? Or are you just on a break? Or what's going on with you? Um, so, as I, hi, Marlene. I'm glad that you're here. Um, so as I mentioned in my reminder thing, hi, Dot, um, I'm going to show you an ornament, um, and I'm also going to do a quick card. I'm the only one in the office, and I have my earpods on. Perfect. That's awesome. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for sharing, Dot. I appreciate it. So where's Carson right now? Is he watching with you, or is he napping? So I'm making an ornament today and I'm making a card. I'm sort of, on my card I'm sort of combining two different projects that I've done recently and just changing them up a little bit. And so um I just realized I don't have one of the things I'm gonna need there. I think that's that's good. Okay. Hi Jamie, thank you for joining me. Napping. Yay. You get a break. <laughs> well, thank you for, uh, I don't know if you are like new moms and you, do you usually try to nap when he naps or do you get things done or just have quiet time? I always remember when we had, uh, young ones, especially newborns, like the doctor would always say, or parents or, you know, whatever, trying to take care of you. Make sure you nap when the baby naps. Don't worry about the house. Um, so anyway, um, okay, so 
I'm going to um, go right to, hi, Julie. I haven't seen you in a long time. How are you? Are you coming to Michigan anytime soon? Um, I have my randomizer all set up. And while there are days I do nap too. I love naps. <laughs> um, I have my randomizer set up and while people are still trying to get on, I'll do that because I'll let them know even if they, um, well, I mean, they don't need to know. I just send the cards. So <laughs> uh, if somebody wins, then even if they didn't know, they would still get it. Good and not sure I want to be there next. Okay, gotcha. All right, so I'm going to switch over to my randomizer, so I'm not going to see comments for a little bit. So I have, oh, I have three cards to give away. Um, not when you're on. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Dad. I appreciate that. Okay, so I, um, prevent a win. you can't win multiple times in one drawing. Okay, so I have three cards to give away. Gotcha. Well, I hope it's a good busy. Um, it's good to, I know I can't see you, but it's good to see you. <laughs> um, I have three cards. They're my last three pumpkin cards that I did. Um, somehow I turned into, in my pumpkins into, I want to see how many different colors I can do. And I was sort of excited that when I realized a couple different cards in, like I was using, I didn't, other than old olive, for like the leaves sometimes or early espresso for leaves or stems stems um i did not duplicate colors so it was fun using lots of colors anyway so i have three pumpkin cards to give away to you so i got to get these out sooner than later okay <clears throat> and i've been doing fairly well at that <laughs> okay i'm starting my randomizer the words the names are spinning right now oh nancy olson's a winner again Congratulations, Nancy. <clears throat> All right. Pick another name and start. Dot Allegary. Didn't you win last week, too? Dot Allegary. Okay. And pick another name and start. <clears throat> Watch, it's Dina. Nope, Cindy. Ooh, cat. that's perfect. Cindy Keller. Congratulations, Cindy. I don't think she's on yet. I was saying watch, it's Dina, um, because the two people that won so far, they were the two colors that, um, two of the colors that were suggested for my, um, oh, what do you call it? I asked for suggestions for colors for my pumpkin, so... Um, Anyway, so it was, um, you must know a Cindy Thacker, a Cindy Keller. <laughs> um, so the first two were the one, two of the people that suggested um, colors, and I thought Dina was going to be the third one because she was the third one that suggested a color, but the color that's left, Cindy will love. So, um, okay, so I'm doing the card today first. And I'm using designer paper. I don't think, no, I know I haven't used it before because I was sort of saving it because we had it in mind. Sorry if it's loud. Had it in mind for, oh, <laughs> for um, our on stage event that we had last week. Um, it is called, just a sec, I don't remember what it's called. It's called Shining Christmas. And it's an online exclu online exclusive. And so one side is foil or shiny. So here's, um, and the colors are garden green and cherry cobbler. Thank you for, it should have been. <laughs> Sorry, Dina. You, Dina, you can have my, um, actually I might have given it away already. You can have my one that doesn't have the white behind it. <laughs> um, uh, cherry cobbler and garden green. So this side has some shiny to it. Um, like the whole thing, actually, can you see that? The whole thing sort of shines. Um, and then the other side is just regular. So there's one, one thing. All 
right, here's another one. So, shiny side with garden green and cherry cobbler. And here is the non shiny side. And then there's this one. I love it. With this side. This one with this side. And then I don't think I did this one yet. This one with this side. And last one is can you see there are little candy canes with hearts? This one, this side. Okay. So one thing I want to mention, I'm not using this piece today, but I had used this piece for, um, for our project that we were doing. So <clears throat> we were, I was using this for a strip across a card, which I'm actually going to be using. I'm going to do a strip across a card for my, my card that I'm doing. Um, but this is, so if you want to be able to get all these trees in here, <clears throat> at the very top, I'll show you the very top because this one isn't cut into. At the very top, you need to cut off like an eighth of an inch. But then if you cut every seven eighths of an inch, you can get between each row of trees. So you can have a full, um, full row of trees um, for each, each one that you do. I totally could. What could you totally do? I don't know what I said. Sorry. I lost track. Um, anyway, so this is the paper that I'm going to use for my first project. And I am not going to try to put that back in there. So I'll just put it aside. Okay. So. Oh, stuff just in the way. Oh, one more thing. So another thing that I'm using, this also is an online exclusive. I don't know if I've, I don't remember if I've shown you this before, but can you tell, huh? Hi, Terry, you didn't miss anything except for the drawing, which, um, and me showing the paper. I forgot to show the paper last night when we were talking about your project that you have. You missed me showing you all the, um, the foil paper that um, I'm about to use. Um, so this one is, can you tell it's, um, what do we call it? Glimmer paper. I wasn't sure if they said shimmer or glimmer. Glimmer is when there's actual glitter and shimmer is when you just have a shimmer like Wink of Stella. Um, so this is glimmer paper. You In this package you get, and this is an online exclusive, you get, um, oh, gotcha. Okay, I understand that. Um, you get one sheet of gold and one sheet of silver, but here's the cool thing. Um, it already has the adhesive on the back. Um, shiny paper name is called Shining, Shining, I don't know, Shining something. Shining Christmas. Um, so this already has the um, adhesive on the back. So you can run it through with your die cutting machine and, you know, intricate dies or whatever. Um, and then just peel the backing off and it's already set for you. So you don't have to put a, an adhesive sheet down on it. Um, it's already got it. So this is something available online exclusive. So I'm going to be using it. I really don't need it for this one, but when Cindy and I were planning our projects for, you're welcome, Dina, um, projects for our on stage at home event that we were doing with our, with our, yeah, exactly with um our teams together um we wanted something shiny and i had this and we thought of it and so anyway so that's what we did so i'm going to be using it in a way that i don't i'm just using a strip of it um and but it works great for that too so one thing that i do have in mind um to tell you i don't know if you guys have multiple trimmers if you keep your old blades at all what i've been doing um, I'm going to show you. <clears throat> I don't know if you'll be able to see it. So the new, the newest trimmer that we have, um, you get the blades in a four pack and they go on this thing. There's not an individual 
cover for each blade. So there's just a sheet of protectors. So you like you don't cut yourself on it or whatever when you throw it away. Um, so for me to keep track of them, I put a Sharpie marker X um, on the ones that I've used up. So if you happen to still have like your old blades, I would suggest you using that for cutting glimmer paper. Um, the, the glitter itself is pretty hard on your blades. Um, I didn't switch back to an old blade. I actually still have my older trimmer here that the blade is already, um, it's already sort of shot, but it still works for something like glimmer paper. So um, anyway, hi Carrie. So that's just my um, my mention to you so you don't, I, I hate, hate dull blades. It drives me crazy. I do not like fuzzies. So if you ever get fuzzies on your cards when you come to a class, mine, I am really sorry because I hate them. <laughs> if I missed it, I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, I want to keep my good blades good. So those are my, my tips for that. Um, Okay, so I'm going to put you down, and I'm going to do my stamping. I'm going to do my card first, and then I will make the ornament that I have in mind. So, in my magic wand, I need to, on backwards you, put you upside down, and I'm going to drop you down a little bit. Oops, I did it too tight. There, that's better. Okay. All right, so I'm using Cherry Cobbler. Um, if you want a good crease, use your bone folder to crease it. I hadn't creased them yet. So I'm just sort of um, doing a background. So I decided that I was going to do, I'm actually using two different stamp sets, I guess, here. So from my background, it's from the same suite. And I don't know where the other, oh, it is here. Okay, I'm using this, um, these berries as my background. I wanted something fine that was going to match what I'm going to be doing, um, doing on my focal point. So I'm just going random, um, just want some sort of background here. Now, when you do this, sometimes it helps if you turn your card instead of just turning your stamp. There's my background. That's just simple. Okay. <clears throat> now, what do you want? Here's the strip of the Shining Christmas designer paper that I want to use. And I'm going to put this down first. down here and then I'm gonna this is my um stamp set looks familiar <laughs> yes I'm using the same stamp set as last night um the card's sort of gonna look familiar too because I'm combining the card and the the item that I gave um Terry last night. I'm not sharing that yet because I'll probably share a different version of it once I'm done with all my clubs this month. Um, hi, Mario. Um, no worries. I'm glad you join us. Okay, so I'm putting this. So remember, this has the adhesive backing. So I just peeled off the backing and didn't have to add any um, adhesive to it. It was already there. So remember, this is an online exclusive, and so is this. You get a sheet of silver and a sheet of gold. <clears throat> so now I'm going to um, do my focal point here, which is... i got to find my stamps. I forgot. Oh, I buried them, kind of. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So I'm doing this a little bit differently than last night. So I want to do my comfort and joy. Oh, so this is 
This is the other stamp set that I'm using. Um, I'm using Tidings of Comfort and Joy. This is from Christmas Classics. So both of these stamp sets are actually in a, what I would call a mega suite. I'm not sure if Stampin' Up! still uses that term, but they used it one time and it makes sense. When you have two bundles in a suite of products, usually you end up having two sets of designer paper. Um, yeah, they're they're so beautiful. I, I love it. Um, so anyway, I'm using the words from here this time. So I need my memento. <clears throat> So, what are two reasons that you use Memento for your... I mean, some people just like Memento, but what are the two reasons that I use Memento for my stamping? Remember two reasons? I'm going to let you answer before I do. Okay, I'm inking it up. I'm testing it. Inking it up, and now I can stamp. So, this is on white today. Instead of last night, we used vanilla, but I'm doing that because I was using this designer paper and this has white in it, not vanilla. So obviously it looks good with both. <clears throat> okay, where is my garden green? I lost it. Okay, so this is... This is my photopolymer and very black color. Photopolymer is correct. The other is not. You can use with markers and blends. Okay, so you each got you each got one of the reasons. So whenever it's photopolymer, you want to use it because it does not. Yes, stamp and blends is the other reason, <clears throat> which is what Marlene said. Um, yes, you can use it with regular markers also, but for photopolymer, see how fine this, maybe you can't see, how fine this line is on this holly. Um, like if you use it with stays on too often and don't clean it right away, um, it can sort of like chip away at it. It will dry it. So you always want to use um, uh, Memento with photopolymer. And <clears throat> Marlene and Dina the second time were correct in you need to use it with your Stampin' Blends because the blends are alcohol-based and they will make any other black bleed. So Memento is made for that. Okay, so I'm also going to do... Um, okay, two things. First of all, I'm doing this with Cherry Cobbler. Um, for these berries that I'm doing here, if you look at it kind of carefully, you can see that there's sort of a separation. There's two that are together and one that's together. And if you look here, there's sort of a short side that's open and a long side that's open. So it just sort of is a hint where, um, where you should stamp your berries. It doesn't have to be. It would be fine without it or, or a different way but that's just a hint. The other thing is, these are tiny little stamp images. The smaller the images, the more careful you have to be when you're inking it up because if you are if you tap too hard, if you certainly if you press it, you're gonna ink up the whole entire block. So I didn't show you on camera. So this is me getting ink on here and look how much there is on there. Can you, t can you tell by the light? So be gentle when you're doing, especially when you're doing um, smaller ones. Okay. You don't have to do it when you stamp it off though. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing this a little differently. Um, last night when we did it, we stamped in Memento and then used Stampin' Blends. But this time what I want to do um, is this. So Sherry asked last night if we were going to, um, use our Wink of Stella and we had used our shaded spruce blends to color it in and we didn't use Wink of Stella last night, but I am using it today, <clears throat> but I don't just want to spread what's here because these are really fine lines and it doesn't give quite as much color as what I want to see, what I prefer to have. 
So what I'm doing is I'm taking my ink pad, pressing my two thumbs in it, and then I made a palette. Now you could use your ink refill and drop it in here or on a non-porous surface or something, but I already have it right here, so I just made a palette. Now I don't want, I can pick up any of this. I don't want all of that, so I'm sort of spreading it a little bit. Let's see how dark, oh, that's good, actually. So um, rather than just trying to spread the little bit of ink that's here, I'm picking up more ink with my Wink of Stella. Now this is the exact same way that you can use just your regular <clears throat> blender pen. So you know there's a difference between a blender pen and a Stampin' Blend, right? The blender pen is the one that has no color. You're just blending. Oftentimes you, you might use it with your watercolor pencils or something like that. Um, but you're, you can use it with your ink pads also and it makes your ink pads even more versatile. So even more amazing, I found this a few years ago, I figured this out. Even more amazing is when you use your, whoops, use your Wink of Stella and pick up color. Oh, there we go. Now you can see the wink. All right, so there's our piece. Okay, so I want this to, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna make my mistake that I made last night. It was kind of funny, actually. I'm such a silly sometimes. They were, it's funny because I wasn't trying to be this way, but but at club last night, they were, um, my people were saying how I was just so confident and I was just working so fast and well, sometimes that's a problem. So I meant last night to put, type of paper am I using? Okay, I'm not sure what you mean. Oh, for the watercolor. Just regular. It's just um, basic white. Um, I don't, I haven't pulled out watercolor paper in a long time. So this is just basic white. Um, Garden Green, Cherry Cobbler. This is Shining Christmas, and this is Glimmer. I don't know if they have it called something specific. Just set. Silver and gold adhesive back glimmer paper. That's what that is. Okay, so what I meant to do last night with this piece was to put dimensionals on the back. And I put adhesive on the back and put it down, and then I was like, oh, oops. Or no, I put dimensionals on the back of this. That's what happened. And so anyway, so that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to just put this down with regular adhesive. And it gives a little bit different dimension. So let's hope that that's kind of dry. Oh, it doesn't really matter because I'm using dimensionals if I can find them. I forgot to make sure I had my dimensionals by me. So I might be searching a minute, just a second. Oh yay, I have some. I thought I tried to leave them here, but you never know with me. Things get buried so easily. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to do corners. So the one thing I feel like I've several times recently told you about spreading the color that you have with, um, with your Wink of Stella. And I've said like Night of Navy is amazing with it and Early Espresso and... Lots of deep colors, Blackberry Bliss. Um, but using it this way where you're picking color up um, right off your ink pad makes it so that you, it, it doesn't matter whether it's spreadable well or not. Um, so if you like a certain color, you can easily do it this way. Okay, so here's my card and um, one last thing that I want to do. I'm gonna do differently this time. So these are adhesive back sparkle gems. I feel like I've used these before. I have a lot of silver left. Or doesn't the wink of cell leave a trail of sparkle on? Yeah, it does. So if you're gonna re-ink your pad or re-ink your, like take this and pinch it again, I would probably like wipe it off. 
get the sparkle off. Um, cause I don't really want sparkle on my actual pad. Um, that was a good question. Um, you made me think of another thing, just like with the blender pen, once you're done with this, I don't know if I did this or if you saw me do it. Once you're done with it, you run it off until it's clear. So then you can use it for whatever again later. Um, okay. So I'm just, I'm not using my take your pick tool. I'm being lazy and I'm just taking this off. I'm gonna put one here and one here. I wonder how this one will look in the middle. Will it look dumb? Oh, I kinda like that. I'm all right with that. I realized I didn't have it lower or higher so I could do two and one, but it's good. Um, so here's my card, really simple. So as you can see that people who are my club members who were here last night or who have done my Dazzling Card Club recently. This sort of combines a couple different things that I've done recently, but I wanted to show this paper. Um, thank you. <clears throat> All right. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you, um, yeah, thank you. I love all the shimmer and shine too. I'm going to show you an ornament and I think I'm gonna show you a done one first. Okay, you vote. Do you like a surprise or do you like to see a done one first? I'm gonna let you vote this time. So, um, majority rules, I'm gonna get out. I need, I'm gonna need my Stampin' Trimmer. Um, thank you, Dina. Have my trimmer. Mario likes a surprise. I love surprises. All right, one vote. Okay, cool. Two surprises. So far, surprise. All right, that decides it. My first three people were surprises. So, um, I gotta find my pieces here. Okay. Uh. <laughs> You'll see it done at the end, Carrie. You got out, you got um, out. Well, I don't, actually, there's a bunch of you now. Julie, done one first. Oh, I think it's, unless somebody's before Julie, it's still majority, it says surprise. So we're going with surprise. Okay, so what I'm doing um, this time, first of all, I'm gonna say, those of you who saw this ornament last night, <clears throat> the size for that one was three by three. Um, I'm doing making this one four by four. Excuse me, four by four. Um, people who used to come to my Christmas stamp camp, I did this ornament. I well, oh, I don't know. I'd say maybe ten or fifteen years ago. It's been a long time since I've done this one. So. Um, I need five pieces like this, um, and you want designer paper that, uh, um, that you like both sides and that the, uh, the direction doesn't matter. Okay. I am a read at the end of the book kind of, <laughs> well, you're going to have to be surprised today, Jolie. <laughs> uh, see, I don't want to know. I, I love surprises. Oh, so that makes me think of a funny story. So my birthday was a couple weeks ago, or maybe just a week ago. I don't know. It's it's so, I'm so bad. Um, and Todd brought me, did I tell you this story already? I don't think I did on my live. Um, um, the, okay, so I came down Saturday morning. He had already gone to work early for a while. Um, and he came home and I came down and he had a muffin, a blueberry muffin from Panera Bread sitting there for me. And um, he's like, there's a treat for you. And I'm like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that treat for you for breakfast. So I'm sitting there and I'm opening up my, my muffin. And I said to him, so were you in the mood for a muffin too? Or did you just want to treat me or or what and he goes yeah let's just go with that and I'm like okay and he goes like it's not obvious 
Well, he had stopped and got me a Panera gift card also because I had asked for that. But I didn't catch on until he said it like it's not obvious. <laughs> so I totally would have not even figured it out if he wouldn't have ruined the surprise. <laughs> oh, he's a funny man. Okay, so, oh, I'm doing this without without telling you. Okay, so this is four inches by four inches. I need five of these. Four of them are already done that I did ahead of time. So right now I am scoring at two inches, so in half. So regardless of what size you have, you're scoring it in half. So I'm scoring it at two inches, and I'm turning it once and scoring it at two inches again. So right now <clears throat> I have score, score, okay? Now I'm going to turn it and put opposite corners in the track where it's going to score again. So I'm scoring one diagonal. Okay, I'm not doing it again. I'm just doing one. <clears throat> so now I have one, two, three. That's it. Okay. So that is all that I need my paper trimmer for. That's the rest I have done. Okay. So now what I want to do is crease on all the lines. So I'm going to crease that one. Crease that one and find my diagonal and crease that one. Now it's helpful, I didn't do this originally, but I found that it's helpful. If you, regardless of which side you wanna see, if you crease your diagonal both ways, it will just help it fold the way that it needs to, okay? Um, so now I have, there's still, there's no diagonals, there's no folding in there. So diagonal, or I mean, score, Score, hi Cindy, you are a winner this morning. And score diagonal here, I creased it well. Now I'm gonna take my diagonal lines and whichever side you want, um, just a sec. Whichever side you want sort of on the outside of the ornament, that's what you wanna see when you're doing your folding. You can do it either way you choose. Um, but you're going to see things two different ways. Uh, you'll see later. So I want to see mostly this. So I'm going to fold my um, diagonals together and see when you do that, then the rest of this comes together like it's supposed to. So I'm folding it, and then I want to crease it, okay? So I'll show you again. So you can pull these opposite ones. See, it just, since I, since I, creased it both ways, um, it's folding the way that I want it to um, easily. Okay, so I'm closing this and tucking my diagonals in, okay? Now, I need to do that with my other four pieces. So I'm just gonna do that quick. I did not do my creasing on this one. Um, when you crease it, it's a way to, if you, we're sort of off center a little bit or something, creasing it will help you fix it because you basically you want it nice and flat. Clearly, I don't know how to count. Where did I? I did five and then a sixth. That's silly. You only need five. Okay, so now we're gonna build it. So this is, um, we're gonna put adhesive. Okay, quick mention, liquid glue is probably a good way to go because it's a strong adhesive, but the one that I that we made this weekend used this designer paper, which as you know, is shiny and foil and whatever, and it kept wanting to slide everywhere and that was no good. So I stopped using that. So I'm just using regular adhesive, but I want quite a bit of it. Um, so I'm doing four strips on here. Okay, so I'm doing it on one side. Now what I need to do now is make sure that I'm gonna stack the next one on here and the opening, like, just a sec. 
like where my open tips are, where there's no folds, where those are, those all need to line up together, okay? So here's my open fold. Here's my open end. I'm gonna stack it on top of each other, okay? And I'm gonna do it again. One, two, three, four. It's being goobery. Okay, open end, open end, and line them up. And again. Open end, open end. So the good thing about liquid glue is that you're allowed to slide it better, but that was the problem that we were having on Saturday because eventually you don't want it to slide, you want it to hold in place and it was not drying the way that we wanted to. All right, open end. Open end. Line it up. As long as you don't press down on it, it works pretty well. Okay, so, um, so this is the this is all you want to do as far as you you're not trying to put these two ends together right now. So when you take this, it opens like that. Cool, right? But there's more to it. You'll see when we get there. All right, so now I want to, well, I'm gonna let this sit here for a minute because I need to find my ribbon here. So I'm using this white, um, uh, I forgot what it's called. White glittered organdy ribbon. Um, it's five squares total of five squares. Um, basically because, like Dina said, it's kind of a star. Okay, so I want, this is a little bit bigger. We used 18 inches for our, I'm going to get this instead, for our three inch pieces. So I'm going to, I'm going to do Twenty-one inches. I don't need the whole two feet, but I think the twenty-one would be good. I want more. You need you need more room. Okay. So I have my ribbon cut. <clears throat> now what you need to do again is pay attention to where your open end is, and um, we're going to go put adhesive on here diagonally from the open end to the other end and you're going to lay your um, lay your ribbon on the open end put the end on the open end and lay it up to the totally folded end okay then we're gonna flip it over do the same thing adhesive from the open end Oops, I can't get it started from the open end to the closed end. And we're gonna lay it on here again. Okay, so right now this is just gonna stay like this for now while we want to cover this, one, to protect it, and two, it's just part of the design. Um, and I decided, I wanna see if I have another, this will work, I'm not sure it's the right color, but it, it will work. All right, um, I have, I don't know where they went. Oh, they're there. Okay, so I have two pieces that are, um, they're one and three quarter inch white pieces. I decided that I wanna put a blue. I forgot there's another reason for it, just to sort of protect it. I'm going to do one and seven eighths, two of those. 
So this is, I think this is boho blue. I feel like balmy blue is probably the blue that's on there, but this will work and I had it close. So you want, you kind of want as much of the, oops, did I leave it on? As much of the ribbon covered as possible. I'm losing everything here, just a second. I knocked my, I knocked my um, name tag off. Leaning over the table. Okay, so, make sure of these, right? How, are I, how do I have three? Oh, there. Yeah. I suddenly had three pieces that looked the same size, and I, but I only cut two, so I needed to make sure I had the right one. Okay, so putting this on here, so I'm just basically decorating the ends and protecting the ribbon. Okay, now I'm going to add more to here. So what I'm going to do for this one, so can you tell which designer paper this is? I never told you. You'll figure it out once I stamp. <laughs> All right, so I'm using this guy. He's so cute, and I'm doing it on the diagonal on purpose. Uh, and I decided instead of midnight, I'm going to do balmy blue. So now I need his scarf. Oh, it doesn't work unless he's, it doesn't work unless he's cut. Just a sec. I'm going to see if I can make this work. Um, this is intended for the bigger bear, but it will work for the smaller one, but usually I end up cutting it so it doesn't, um, doesn't show. So here's what I did. Um, so this is way too big of a neck for him. So what I did was there's, um, there's stripes, and so I wiped off two of the sections of stripes so then it would fit on his neck better all right so i'm gonna do this again try not to ink that one up then i don't well i have to to get the end wipe that off <laughs> he's so cute all right so now this is going to go on my ends also. Now, again, I want to pay attention. By the way, I didn't mention, you want to make sure that this doesn't get twisted when you put this on like that. And I want him to be on here so that, so that he's straight up at the top. That's the top. So I'll put him on here again, or put adhesive on this again. Okay. So <clears throat> this is how you can store it. And I'll show you how we can make it work otherwise. So we're going to put, when I did it years ago, we sold buttons, and so I used buttons. Um, this time, Cindy bought some beads. And 
what we're going to do is fold this so that we can get it into here. You for sure want to make sure that you don't have it twisted so you can get it on here. Now, because these have bigger holes, you need to, you end up needing to knot this a couple times because you need the bead knot to fall off. So we have that, and then we're going to do it one more time. Okay, so now, oops, this is the wrong way, just a sec. I'm gonna show you So this is it. Slide the bead down here. Oh, it's not. Why is it being weird? I put it on the wrong side. I put it on the wrong side. That was dumb. Okay. Well, now you know what not to do. Okay, let's see if I can fix this. I told you the wrong way. <laughs> That's no good. All right. Guess I'm showing you more tips. All right, so here's the tip that I need right now. Did I show you this last week? Somehow I feel like I showed you this last week. What is wrong with me? Okay, this right here will help me get this off. I completely did it wrong. I'm like, why is this not working the way it's supposed to? I can put it on my silicone because it'll be good. Okay. All right, I did this wrong. Good thing about this um, organdy is it's sort of porous, so it will be forgivable. Okay, I need the end to be on the whole fold folded corner. So the end is on the folded corner. The knot end is up at the open. There, and I still, that'll work still like that. Okay, now I need these back on. I'm put, gonna put more adhesive on here because it's, remember we're protecting our ribbon. So we need it to be strong enough. I did it, I did it correctly on my samples that I made to show you guys. Yeah, exactly, you are learning by my mistake. Don't do what I do, do what I say. Except I said it wrong earlier. <laughs> so don't do that either. Do what works the correct way. Okay, so. Now this needs to be on back on here. I'm gonna need another knot on here. That was too few of knots or something. Or did I undo the knot? I think I undid the knot. Okay, so I put the bead on again, did the second knot. You wanna stack it so that it can't get over it. Okay, so now, there we go. Okay, so now this is how you can store it. Like in your ornament box or whatever. And when you want it to look pretty, you slide this up, you inside it out so that you can see the star and you slide this back down. And then it can hang on your tree. Cool, right? Ha, well, I got through that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> 
just a reminder while we're looking at this really quick. So if you want this side to sort of be your focal point, like this is on the tree, um, that's what you need to see when you're doing all your gluing. Does that make sense? So when we did this, this piece that I don't need, when we did this together like this, this is the side that you want to see if this is what you want to see here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn you guys back up and I'll show you this one better so you can see it hanging. And then I have more samples to show you. Um, so I'm going to upside down, put you backwards and lift you up. Um, okay. That's awesome. So Julie, you were, you were at my, um, stamp camp when we did these years ago. Okay. So here is the ornament. Okay. So this is the, I'll put my hand by it so you can kind of see it. So this is the four by four size. And obviously if you wanted to see the, the paw prints and the gifts and stuff like that, you could flip it inside out. Yes, I'm picking up your points, a bunny point. Oh, good. <laughs> um, so if you wanted to see, I need to do it that way. Just a sec. Put those. I just want to show you, so you make sure that you understand. So if you wanted to see this side, then you would want to fold it like this. So whatever the main focal point you want is, you want to see that when you're doing your adhesive. Okay, so here's this one. And remember, and then when you're done with it, I'm gonna put it back. So you slide it back up, you put it back inside out, slide it back down and it holds it in place. Okay, so here is the one that we made with um, my this weekend at our on stage at home event. So this is the three inch one. So um, remember you do it in half. So if you have a three inch piece, then you're scoring at one and a half and one and a half and then diagonal. So here, excuse me, here's this one. And then I also did, this one's a crazy one. I did a six inch one, because I know some of you might have, um, yeah, it's cool. I don't know where Cindy got the button, or the beads. You probably can just look for them. Um, I sort of wish they had a little bit smaller opening, but they work fine. Um, so here's, this one is a six inch one. So I made this one I covered it again with another piece of designer paper, and then I used the designer paper that has the, the part that obviously it needs to be straight up and down. So this you might have, for those of you who have humongous trees, oops, I have it. I don't have it, the knot centered. I need to change that. Look at that. I love it. Okay, here's my hand again. So this was six inch by six inch DSP. So scoring at three, scoring at three, diagonal. <coughs> Excuse me. So I definitely need to fix this knot because it should be centered at the top. So it when it hangs, it's whatever. All right. So there's my ornaments. So you could do whatever size you wanted. Um, <clears throat> I know it is huge. Um, obviously, it makes more sense with your designer paper if you're doing three by three or four by four. You can get even numbers of things out of it. But if for some reason you need something in between there, you could do a five by five. You just need to know your half marks. Um, so remember the key for putting your ribbon on is the ribbon needs to go up um, or sort of hang from the open end. Otherwise you don't get the whole inside out thing correctly. All right, 
I should show you all three of them together. Just a sec. Where's my... Oh, I flattened it. I'm going to unflatten it and show you these again. Okay. So I have six inch, four inch, three inch. It's kind of hard to tell. I can't get them to be, can't get them to be there. Oh, I have one on there. Haha. <laughs> so fun. Okay. And then I am Santa's elf, huh? Imagine me adding a little battery operated string of lights. <laughs> the button is good for more country or classic look. Sure. Um, do you have these on your tree? Um, I, well, first of all, I haven't made them in years and years. Um, but I do remember somebody made one, I think, for um, our ornament exchange that's coming up in a few weeks. Um, yeah, a few weeks. Um, I got one from somebody who made it. Um, so I do have one that's on my tree. Otherwise, I just have regular ornaments. Um, oh, and where's my card? Okay, so and here's my card that I made, too. So that's it. So um, I'm, I'm, how am I Santa's elf? <laughs> You're so funny, Cindy. Okay, so a couple things. First of all, remember... We have an awesome sale going on right now. If you need um, all the basics, well, plus some ribbon. Um, Stampin' Up! Through Tomorrow has a sale. 20% um, off cardstock, designer paper, specialty papers. Um, I think it's just in the annual catalog. I don't think that like online exclusives count. I just found out last night that it's not on the mini catalog. So I'm guessing that's not an online either. Um, cardstock, design paper, envelopes, specialty paper, even the, the memories and more um, envelopes and no cards, that sort of thing. So that's 20% off. Um, inks, ink pads, ink refills, um, like other inks like Memento and Stazon, Versamark. Um, Stampin' Blends and Markers, those are 15% off. And, oh, what's the other thing? Oh, and then 10% off ribbons and trim. So, like something like, um, what do you call it? Well, some things are called trim, or some things like their baker's twine is considered probably considered a trim. So 10% off all those in the annual catalog. So it's awesome if you need some of the basics. So that's through tomorrow. Um, I have the ornament exchange and potluck is coming up. It's December 2. You need to register by the 30th. And um, I still have not designed for yet. I need to do that. And opened up registration for Dazzling Card Club. So... Um, but anyway, so I'm excited. So, um, thank you for joining me today. I will see you again next Wednesday morning. It will be the day before Thanksgiving, but I should still be able to go live. Um, so I hope you have a wonderful week. And if you, thank you, Mario, you could, you do that too. <clears throat> um, if you make one of your own, show us, we want to see a picture if you make um, an ornament. So I will see you again next week and have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye.